This is what anorexia is all about. Sitting there saying no, refusing to do it, you need to drink your drink to the end. Katie, please will you sit down and drink your drink? 15-year-old Katie Neal suffers from anorexia. She's dangerously underweight, but her mother Leslie just can't persuade her daughter to eat. Absolutely everything is negotiated and it drives me balmy. She has absolute control over everything we do, everything we say and everything we eat. I would really appreciate it if you'd hurry up. So you've lost more weight. Have you eaten everything that you said you've eaten this week? Yeah, I've eaten everything I've said I've eaten. You haven't I hidden anything? No. The family are pinning their hopes on one of the UK's leading child psychiatric units at the Maudsley Hospital in London. It's the first time cameras have been allowed to film this pioneering family therapy. And I actually think, Katie, I really don't think you can be feeling very well down there. To me, you look pale, you look drawn. I don't think that you can be feeling very well. Honestly, this way you know me. I know. all my friends are so All I want to do is just be a bit more normal. This is the face of anorexia, sitting, watching a plate of baked beans going cold. It's been there for half an hour. Normally Katie gets up at some ridiculously early hour of the day, six o'clock during the week, seven o'clock on holidays and weekends, if not earlier, and she has her breakfast cereal. This morning, knowing that her breakfast had to be increased by a plate of baked beans, Katie didn't even start to have her breakfast until 20 to 9. So now she's eaten her bowl of cereal and is refusing to eat her baked beans. Everybody else has duly sat here and joined her in the baked beans so she doesn't feel lonely, but they've all finished, given up and left the table. I've told Katie she can have till 10 o'clock and if, that ba if the baked beans haven't gone then she won't be going out at 12 o'clock as she would like to do. Now are you going to eat those? It's 20 to 10 now. Yeah, I'll eat it within the time. Right, okay. Let's see if we're lucky. Right, right. It'd be nice to see the plate of baked beans and you, and you eating them, but it doesn't matter if you can't. Right, okay. Katie developed anorexia nervosa after a spate of sickness which put her off food. She found it difficult to resume eating and has developed an overwhelming fear of food and of putting on weight. Good girl. Cook breakfast before school and everything's difficult, but it's not. And um, actually, it'll help Amanda when she's at school. Mm -hmm. If she can just eat quickly. After psyching herself up to her breakfast for half an hour, Katie takes a full 16 minutes to finally finish her plate. A mistake because it's all muddy. Hey, congratulations! By the skin of your teeth, it's dead on 10 o'clock and she's eaten it. Great! Screaming, just sitting there crying or looking at it and just refusing to do it. I mean, I have sat there from 8 o'clock one evening till 3 o'clock in the morning with one piece of toast. Yeah, it sort of changes really. I mean, that sometimes I will just like eat it and stuff like that, and I'll be like, oh, yeah, it's fine, you know, and um, everything will be okay. Um, and then like, other times I will just be like, oh, I don't want to. And I, and I sort of like, won't want to, and I don't know. I just don't feel like it, or like, I don't like feeling full up, um, and then I feel full, and then I don't like eating anymore. Katie was a healthy 12 year old. But within a year, she had shrunk to a four and a half stone skeleton and had to go into hospital due to complications from anorexia. Did you think she was going to die? I did on her birthday. Why? What happened on her birthday? She was in Great Ormond Street. And we were all up there for her 13th birthday and she didn't even know we were there. She was on so many drugs because of the pain. And she's just slipping away, I presume. Well, it felt like it. 
she was quite delirious, she didn't know who was in the room, who wasn't in the room. And she was still crying and screaming with the pain. Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Katie and Leslie are part of a treatment programme at the Maudsley Hospital in which the whole family fight anorexia. The Maudsley have found that 90% of their patients do well by working with families in therapy rather than admitting the children to hospital. We bring Katie here each week to weigh her and because we're really concerned about her weight and how it's dropping, we make her take her jeans off and shoes off and so forth, so we get a base weight. Um, and it has been consistently dropping, which is worrying. It's very scary. And as yet, I haven't understood what is exactly behind it for her, why it's so difficult for her to, to change. So I think maybe I better go and get her. Katie's anorexia is life-threatening and she must be carefully monitored before each session. This week, Katie has lost more weight, taking her down to the average for an 11-year-old girl. Penny is one of a team of therapists who are treating Katie. In order not to intimidate the patient, the other therapists and doctors watch the session on a video link. So you felt things have been better? So what do you think Mum's going to think when we show the chart? I don't know, because I've lost weight, according to the weight of um, last week. And we're almost down to where you were at the lowest. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I did, I drank a lot last time and I haven't drunk anything this time. I've been to the toilet and everything. Um, so I don't know. So is it a complete mystery, Katie? I don't know, I mean, I've been eating everything. The difficulty, in a way, probably for Leslie as well as for me, is that it sounds as though you're having a reasonable amount, but clearly you're not, so I don't know where it's going or what's happening to it. You're still tempted to hide some of it. <coughs> having heard Casey's responses and discussed her weight loss, the team think the time is right to try a new strategy. Right, OK. Right. So, that was the team, and they feel it would be helpful to um, take a little break now and see if they've got any ideas, because it sounds as though we're going round over old ground, which okay. indeed we are. Yes. But um, it's difficult to know where to go from there. Okay. All right. Still look upset, kid. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. I think if we're going to say Katie's really ill, we also need to think about Katie dropping out of school until right. she manages to get her weight back up. Mm. Um, and, you know, maybe create that hospital environment at home. And I think everyone's anxieties, I think everyone needs to realise that, um, you know, this, this is quite critical, things are mm. going downhill. What do you think the response would be if we suggested that she didn't go to school? I, I can imagine them having a complete well, sure fit. Will. How can I put that to her as this is what we advise or what do they think? Or, I mean, how strongly should I put this? If mm. she's going to be at home, the mother's mm. going to have to literally supervise start to finish with a meal. Mm. And if it takes a long time, then that's just mm. going to have to happen. Mm. And if that doesn't work, then the only next alternative is hospital. The message now is to go out of school, to stop going to school. No school. We just got to bite the bullet. This should be our recommendation. Whether they do it or they don't do it is, is up to them. But I think this is what we recommend, that she shouldn't be going to school. She needs to come each week. And if it doesn't turn around within the next month, then we really need to seriously think about the ward. An admission to an inpatient ward would be a serious step in Katie's treatment.
But before that happens, the team want to try a new plan to help Katie put on weight. And the general consensus of opinion is that we are worried about you, Katie. So we're going to make a referral to the ward, our, our ward, eating disorders ward, which gives you a bit of time. And in the meanwhile, we actually feel that you're not well enough to be at school. Well, then what am I going to do? And we think that you should be at home and where mum can keep an eye on exactly what you're eating. And I, I do believe you. And I think you are trying terribly hard. And I think it is more of a struggle than you're letting on. Honestly, this is me not being a I know. Because all my friends will stop you. But your friends will come and see Why you. Why can't they, they come, come and see, see you, Katie? Home? Is just be a bit more normal. Um, I don't want to stay home because everyone's going to be like, oh, why are you at home and stuff? <laughs> if you can't go into school, then I can't go into work. I'll be at home with you. Okay then. All right? Okay then. <laughs> Does that feel better? Okay. Okay. Don't worry. I'll be there with you. There is room for improvement. I just hope, I really, really hope that she succeeded this week. Leslie doesn't keep scales at home to stop Katie obsessively weighing herself. She won't know if Katie's put on any weight until she's been checked at the Maudsley. So, take a seat there. I'm just going to have a chat with my colleagues yes. about what's okay. weight-wise, and um, I'll come okay. back. Okay. And you can ask Katie what she she thinks it's happened. Okay. Well, was it good? Bad? No, she's told you, hasn't she? No, she's not. She's she looking not? for a smile or a scowl or something, and she said, oh, I'm not giving anything away. All right. Shall I tell you what do you think? She's going to do the question thing. What do you think's gone on? No, we, well, we always get the same. What, what do you think's happened? Well, tell me. What, Why not? Well, tell me then. I've lost weight. Again. You've lost weight? Yeah, and then they've gone in. She said, oh, do you want to come and have a chat with me about the weights? So they've gone in to talk again. Ah, so you've lost more weight. Have you eaten everything that you said you've eaten this week? Yeah, I've eaten everything I've said I've eaten. You haven't like, hidden anything? No. Thrown it away? So... <laughs> mm. Mm, what? She tells me she's lost weight. Yes. If Mum were to feed you and decide what you would have at breakfast, snack, lunch, tea and so forth, how would you cope with that? What would happen, do you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, I would like to be able to choose, because... I don't think that's going to work, but if you're not able to choose, Katie, yeah. and Mum is choosing for you, as if you were in the hospital. Because I think it's that constant battle with how am I going to outwit mum and not eat this is, is what's so awful because there's a bit of you that does want to have it and a bit that won't let you. In some ways, it, maybe it needs to be this agreement, Katie, because actually we're all trying to fight anorexia. Mm. And maybe, Katie, with you, when we've got the weight going up a bit, we need to work more on what fuels it because I do think that there is a huge ambivalence about what on earth better is. Mm. And I think that's one of the difficulties. And I think it's about letting mum take over and this is what has to happen. It's the second week of Katie being off school and now Leslie's been advised to supervise mealtimes even more closely. I would really appreciate it if you'd hurry up. Although Katie knows there's a camera monitoring her eating, anorexia overpowers her and she slips the biscuits out of sight. I'm just at the end of my tether. I just want Katie well again now. <sighs> oh, it would be so lovely to be having the normal rows that parents of teenagers have. Like, no, you mustn't smoke, and no, you can't drink too much, and no, you, you know, you will be home at a certain hour. Because it's not the point. The point is that you have to eat something. If you won't choose what you're going to eat, I'll give you something to eat. 
yeah, I don't really feel like I've got a relationship with my daughter at the moment. It's, it is purely about eating. It may be a waste of time as far as you're concerned, but I've done my bit. Sit there and you eat it. I love her dearly, but I've, it's very difficult to show her how much I love her. If I hold her and we have a hug, she's as stiff as a board and all bones. It's a week after the multi-family group and Tron's back at the Maudsley to see if the new atmosphere at home has helped him put on weight. Do you have any anything else? Any mobile phone or coins or keys? Or... Right, do you want to jump on? Now come and see, come and see, corner. See, you come here, come here in front of me. Banging up or down? It's gone up by 700 grams. That's about a pound. Uh, over a pound. All right. This weight increase is not enough to make a real difference. Tron is 15, but only weighs the same as the average 11 year old boy. Okay. Come in, I'm just going to go and tell the team. Yeah, He's still got a way to go, because actually what he needs to be doing is eating you know, a proper meal. You know, and I think it's part of the sort of gentleness of Tron's family, of sort of trying to do it step by step gradually, which has worked well for him, but which perhaps needs to speed up. So, you know, he actually needs to be sitting down with his ha family and having, you know, a proper dinner. As a first step, therapist Gladys Ellis must persuade Tron to eat something after 5 p.m. How are we going to move this on? Try something small. Hmm? Try something small like that, father will gradually build it up. Like what? Maybe that little sweet or something, just a little tiny something. And then gradually build it up. Mm. Mm. What sweet will that be? Anything small. Like something what? Something chewable. Uh, something that I can Like a Mars bar? Uh, like the tiny Mars bars? Uh -huh. Like gum? Mm. Even gum. Like, I don't know, like a toffee? Maybe. Like what? Just something small that I can suck on or. Exactly. Well, you know, I guess if we just talked about it and didn't make a plan about the doing, then I think that would feed the, you know, the stuck, you know, kind of trap. But actually he's agreed to try and do something um, so that it, it isn't just about thinking and talking, but actually doing, because lots of people with this illness are very good talkers and thinkers and not very good doers. It's nearly five o'clock the same evening, and Tron has promised to try to eat a couple of sweets. If he can do it, it'll be the first time he's eaten anything past his deadline in two years. Um, Tron, how do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it at five o'clock? If I won't do it spot on five o'clock, because then you'll know, you know. I'll just come and say, come down, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. And don't worry. Don't forget to do your chart, please. Okay. Connor, wait a minute. You get inside the fridge. Yeah, Mum. Yeah. Extra anxiety. Oh, yeah. A. Anxiety. A N X. I. T Y. Well, do you want to take some in the hat? You know. Yeah. All right. Don't think about it, just be relaxed and... You could be doing your shoes actually, Tron, do you want to get your shoes on? Just that way you're not thinking too much about it. After Tron eats the second sweet, he and his mum go for a walk to ease the tension. Did you eat the other one? Yeah. It's not a massive achievement, it's not even a big achievement. It's kind of a small achievement. But I'm still glad I've done it. 
and I've gone past five o'clock. It may have been two sweets, but it was still five o'clock. I think you should be proud of yourself. I'm proud of you. Shake, are you shaking, are you? Hey. No, don't, don't, uh, don't be, um, don't be scared of it, I can tell you that. It's just been two years since I haven't eaten a pint of clock. Mm. is my main concern. Yeah, and I think we did it a couple of minutes past five. Because <laughs> you know me, I don't give you the time, do I? Hi, Dad. I, uh, I had two sweets at five past five. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, all right, bye. Okay. I'm really chuffed, yeah. I'll be phoning a few people up later. <laughs> Yeah, no, I am actually. Because he's a big step for him, you know, so, uh, yeah. And Rob's pleased as well, even though he wasn't here to see it. As the weeks go by, Tron continues to make progress, eating more and later in the day. And his parents are keeping up the gentle pressure recommended by the team at the Maudsley. Do that tomorrow. Then, Start then. things to come, isn't it, Tron? Mm. Mm. Get some chips on the way home again tomorrow. And oh, God. Get it and Gradually do it bit by bit, and it? Get it later and later. Be nice to sit down and have a dinner at six so one day, isn't it? Oh. Well, not, not, I'll go out for a meal one day. Mm. You know, even if it's a McDonald's, six o'clock in the evening, it'd be nice. And it always looks like you want something to eat, isn't it? Mm. When Dad has his Chinese. <laughs> and you look like he really could manage it. But you just don't do it. Mm. Because I can't manage it yet. No, but you, you've you've yeah. come close, yeah. haven't you? No, Dad's come close to putting his fork in my mouth. <laughs> 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 That's good, that was it. Yeah, yeah well, why he's not looking? He's waiting for his mouth to open a bit. Today is Thursday. I'm supposed to be going to work. For Katie, it's her third week off school, at home, being supervised by Mum. We've been arguing over a breakfast with honey on it. It's now 25 past eight. This has been going on since 10 past seven. The more vigilant Leslie becomes, the more Katie's anorexia leads her to resort to new tactics. I think I opened a drawer to put some washing away. And I just happened to find a bag of mouldy sandwiches. And so once I'd found one thing, I started looking through all the drawers and in the cupboards and just kept finding more and more and more. Which is rather difficult to describe, but it's a very peachy, stinky coloured liquid. I don't know how long it's been in a bag, but it's obviously one of the high calorie end life drinks. Oh, look, more almonds. a bit heavy. It's a pork pie. So this is part of the lunchtime pork pie she said that she had for lunch on Friday. Half a packet of cheesy wiggles. So that's half a cereal bar stuffed between the CDs and the player. More almonds. Oh, two complete jam tarts. Oh, God. I'm really, really disappointed. I so thought, I suppose I wanted, I really wanted to believe that she had made an effort yesterday and today, and she hasn't. I came back and Mum's like, oh, yeah, um, and they looked in my room and they found all that food and stuff. 
um, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I have found this week hard, and like, I didn't think it was that bad, really, because, like, I mean, like, I've eaten most of the stuff I've been given. I don't know what to say about it, really. I can't get over the fact that she just stands there and point blankly denies it. I didn't do it. It's not mine. I didn't put it there. And I do have to work hard to eat, and it's like, I don't... I have to, you know... feel like it, and, like, make myself... And when I don't feel well, I just... I don't find it easy to make myself eat. After three weeks at home, the situation's getting serious. With Casey refusing to eat, hiding food and losing weight, Leslie is running out of options. I think it's time she went to have a look at an eating disorders unit to see what it's like. She needs another, another kick somewhere. Um, she, I don't think she believes that it's really going to happen. Um, maybe by actually having this arranged, it will help her to see that this is not an idle threat. Katie Neal is severely underweight and is getting to the point where she may need to be admitted to hospital. admitted how long would I have to stay for? We try to keep the admissions short and to build up the time for home leave as quickly as possible so that they don't become institutionalised mm -hmm. and that they do get back to their normal life as quickly as possible. Because then they showed us round and like loads of the, and like all the people in there were they really they really, they really were like thin and you could see why they needed to be in there and everything else. And they were like, obviously, you know, really need help. Mm -hmm. But then when it actually came to it, I don't want to go in there. I really don't. I have spent enough time in hospital and I want to be at home. I'm, I, I, I want to get better. I really do. And that's one why I was sort of like stuck because I want all the therapy sessions and the help, but I want to do it at home. Whether Katie is admitted to the ward as an inpatient will depend on her ability to fight the anorexia and to stabilise her weight. For Tron's family, this is a momentous occasion. For the first time in three years, they are all going to have dinner together at the same table. I'm alright, I like this. Oh, he's going for it, he's going for it. Oh. Although he still doesn't like eating after five o'clock, Tron's increasing in height and weight, and it's obvious to the family that he's making progress. He's a lot more happy and he's a lot more confident. And even going out shopping now is, is no chore for him because what he loves now is he can go and get a man's small size and he loves that, doesn't he? Mm, yeah. Actually, when you keep moaning about how much I'm spending, but it's nice. <laughs> as long as I'm getting my weight up, I don't care how long it takes. I just want to get my weight up before I do all the time. I just want to get to the safe part and then start pushing for the time. I'm, I think he's over it now. You know, he's got a, he's got a weight to go really, but he's he's over that bit where we don't have to worry so much. You know? Yeah. My weight's just been going all the way up. I'm trying as good as I can to get better now. I'm kind of getting there, but it'll take time. Three months after visiting the ward, Katie's managed to stay out of hospital. Although she's still underweight, she's well enough to be back at school and to sit her GCSEs. I feel more in control of myself. I don't feel like I'm being controlled by anorexia. I, I do what I, I want to do and things. You know, I'm, I'm eating what I want to and I'm doing what I want to. I still need to put on weight more, but I feel more like my own person. People in the group of anorexia very seldom can turn things around on their own. And it is a long process, because everybody who gets better has had phases when they're very stuck. 
somewhere there has to be pressure. And if it's not coming from within, it's got to come from outside, whether it's family, hospital, or somebody else. The team at the Maudsley are continuing to work with Katie to find the right solution for her. So what's the stage with Katie now? If we can do this interview in a year's time when Katie is better, then I'll give you a definitive answer. On average, work with people for about a year. And most people get better. And they get better with the help of their families. Now she will eat, but only what she considers to be healthy eating. So she'll eat salad and fruit and vegetables and bean sprouts. I think perhaps once a day she will eat, you know, a little finger-sized cake. Leslie has adopted a gentler approach to help Katie fight anorexia, and their relationship has improved. Every day I hope that something will happen that will shock her, and she'll just say, gosh, what am I doing this for? Give me a cream cake! <laughs> There's more information about anorexia and other eating disorders available from our recorded information.